I speak with people often who are dealing with issues from the past, residue of something catastrophic or something major that happened in their life, something negative. It could have been something that was done to them or something that they did. And what ends up happening, especially if it's something that you did, it ends up becoming a regrettable situation. Should Christians have regrets? Well, if you, by that, does that mean that should Christians, or this question is, should Christians regret things they've done in the past? Well, yeah, if you're sorry about it, but does that mean that you should live a regretting, regretful life? Meaning that you carry the baggage of that, that you carry the weight of that. And the word for you all who are wondering that, the actual answer to that is no. Paul says this. He says, brother, I do not regard myself as having laid hold of it yet, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind me, reaching forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ. Listen, you have done some things, you have messed up, you have screwed up royally. I can attest to that I have. I would sit there in prison and think about all the things that I've messed up, the lives that I may have hurt and 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 I don't know if I destroyed because I don't know, but I would look at it like that. I would feel that way. I would look at what happened uh, with the people that were associated with me in business, the people at church, the name of Christ as well, but also my family who I would see all the time struggling and that would bother me. So what would I do? Should I uh, focus on that. Well, if you focus on that too much, you'll stay right there in those same thoughts. You'll keep thinking about how you've messed up. And it's fine. I know that you messed up, but the Bible says that we have become a new creature. Even if after becoming a new creature, we mess up, we are still being renewed. We are still growing in him. He, his work is not finished. As a matter of fact, Paul says this, that I'm confident this one thing that he, that's God who began a good work in us. He is the one that's going to complete it. Now, does that mean that from the time that he starts halfway through, he's completed it. halfway through we're there. Now he's speaking in terms of salvation, but as we're moving, obviously there are going to be some hiccups. There are going to be some things that we're going to do. Maybe what you did in the past was before you were a Christian or even after you were a Christian. How could you do such a thing? How could a believer mess up so bad? Well, because he's a human being. Paul says the bad things I don't want to do, I keep doing. I wish I could do the good things, but he says the good things I want to do, I don't do. Does that mean that he didn't do any good things? No, but he keeps messing up and it bothers him. Sin bothers you. And if sin is bothering you, that's a good thing. That's an indication of something on the inside that doesn't sit well with you. But if you can mess up and sit well with you or not bother you, well, now we have a problem. And so if your past mistakes, your failures, your sins, be they intentional or unintentional, doesn't really matter, however gross or however major it is, however bad it's affected people, if that doesn't bother you, well, that's a problem also. But is that the end? No, it is not. We are overcomers, even overcomers of our own sin. Paul, I mean, it's not Paul, Jesus says that no man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom. That means looking back towards the world and the sin and even the sin that you committed. All of those things are behind you. You do not have to and do not let the enemy keep you bound by past mistakes, past uh, sins. As he says to the woman, go and sin no more. Where are your accusers? Are, is there anyone here that is accusing you, that's condemning you? Now, it's after Jesus makes this statement to those people who come and accuse this woman in adultery. And yes, there's an issue as to whether that particular part of the Bible belongs there or not. But his point is still well taken. The passage is still well taken. He says, neither do I. So go and sin no more. Just move forward. Just move forward, forgetting about the regrets, because I promise you, if you carry that burden of regrets, it's going to be pretty hard for you to even reach your potential in Christ. So do not let the enemy remind you of yours. Matter of fact, if you're open with it, folks know that, hey, I was a rotten person. I was no good. Amen. Now what's next? That was 1990. That was 1995. That was 2001. That was 2010. That was 2022. That was last week. Now I am trying to move forward. And if anyone stops you or wants to stop you from moving forward, that person dismiss that person and look to Christ who guess what he is. As the Bible says, he is the author and the finisher, the completer, the one who completes our faith. That's what we look forward to. Amen.